Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Emily Everett, and I am the ISP in the Pacific Northwest region. So I have the pleasure of introducing the wonderful Michelle Shimon. Um, if you guys don't know her already, uh, Michelle is a seasoned orthodontic professional with over 30 years of experience in the field. Um, her journey began back in 1990 as a registered dental assistant, and she has since excelled teaching various aspects of the orthodontic practice, including assisting, marketing, financials, treatment coordination, and practice management. Uh, with her reputation as one of the most sought after trainers in the field, Michelle conducts over 60 lectures annually, both domestic and international. When she's not traveling across the country, she's working with orthodontic offices. She can be found near her Seattle, Washington residence, raising her two teenage sons and with her husband, Chris. As a Pacific Northwest resident, she has um, enjoyed golfing, water sports in the summer, and is always in the mountains skiing in the winter. So with firsthand experience, I am excited to introduce you guys to Michelle. So I'll go ahead and pass that on over to her. Thank you so much, Emily. I feel so much pride and honor towards the Pacific Northwest. Love that you're a local and that I've got to have the privilege of uh, partnering alongside you with a lot of local doctors and clients. So that's fabulous. And I can't believe as we get ready to go into 2024, doing the math, I'm coming up on 34 years in our industry. So it's something that um, I'm extremely proud of and excited about. And I find a tremendous passion um, in what I do in getting to work with each one of you, not only all over North America, but all over the world. So with that ability, I get to have eyes and boots on the ground with so many different scenarios in our business of orthodontics. And I, I really commit to collaboration and identifying some of the greatest processes and services to elevate your practices. And I'm really excited for the opportunity with the DM team today to bring some of those pearls directly to you. So I know, I think it was Michelle that mentioned it a moment ago in the chat. We are not gonna have questions throughout um, so that I can manage the timing, but at the end, um, this is about you. And there are a lot of people on this recording, but um, I do want to be able to have it as interactive as possible. So um, the DM team is going to assist us with moderating those questions as we go through the process. Please don't hesitate to type them in. They will be captured and uh, I will be able to address all of those at the end of our time today. So I am thrilled and excited to really talk to you today about how to harness the power of dental monitoring to truly provide an unparalleled patient experience and patient care within your practice. Um, I know that all of you are users to some extent. So today we are going to share information from those practices that are just getting started to the practices that have really mastered the process and how can they elevate their system as well. Um, so I will also correct uh, Emily a little bit. I know my bio says teenage sons, but both of my sons are grown and out of the house now. I have a 22 year old and a 24 year old. And uh, I tell you, I will absolutely um, just really be thrilled and so excited and happy anytime I get to spend time with them because that's not very often. So as we proceed this morning, we are going to talk about why dental monitoring matters, not only in our industry now, but in your practice, and how you can use dental monitoring and the technology it provides you as a unique differentiator, and how it's imperative that passion is required in the process so that you and your entire practice has the ability to influence. Those of you that have heard me lecture and train and coach in the past, you know that I am extremely passionate about influence. My background um, as I was working in orthodontics was actually in psychology. I thought that I was going to be a counselor and I ended up getting married and having a family. Um, actually, my husband and I are getting ready to celebrate 20 seven years of marriage. So um, I really enjoy taking those skill sets and what I learned around psychology and the psychology of influence. 
So yes, I train a lot in sales and systems and processes, but the foundation of that training is really based on the psychology of influence. And I'm going to share a lot of that with you today. We are going to talk about the evolution of patient care and how you can use that to really elevate your new patient exam and experience as well. And then some step-by-step -step processes for really what the recipe of success is with dental monitoring in your practice in positioning you for strategic uh, continued growth. Really, you can't ignore at this point the tool in serving your patients that Dental Monitor provides you. Um, as we've said, and I'm going to continue to say throughout our time today, your passion is your influence. So how can we use that and dental monitoring to differentiate you? How your communication and listening techniques really affect your new patient exam can arm you with the confidence needed to be the highest caliber team out there. And I did a quick sweep over uh, some of the names and the attendees. I see a lot of really familiar faces and I feel honored and grateful to have you here this Friday, which is a beautiful day. I'm happy it's Friday, but I'm, I'm happier that I get to finish my week off with each of you. I know that we can't deny or ignore how technology has truly changed our industry and especially in how we serve our patients, really from digital records. Uh, I worked in the industry when we still used dip, dip tanks um, to process our x-rays. And then we would use automatic processors, but it was still a very different patient experience than what we have today in our digital x-rays and digital record taking that we have to streamline. Um, think back, um, those of you that either have worked in the industry back then, or those of you that have heard about it, what our new patient exam process used to look like with three appointments for the patient to simply hear what the recommended treatment was. That's not even including the commitment or the start appointment to get started with treatment. Nowadays, our patients are expecting convenience and with technology, we can combine those three appointments into one appointment. And I know this is a basic um, topic that I'm even bringing up here, but I did want it on your radar to visit back to how that actually is technology that changed our process and how we serve our patients and the convenience of facilitating um, their solution for their orthodontic problems. It's anything now from our financial arrangements being done from the convenience of their own home to signing a contract and essentially getting started with their digital treatment plan because we've scanned, we know exactly what it's going to be, we've presented it, they don't even have to come into the practice until it's time to either get their braces or to get their aligners. So think about how the technological advancements in our industry have shaped our patient expectations. It really translates to how much time our patients have to spend in the practice and the level of convenience our patients now expect. So really the integration of cutting edge technologies has become a cornerstone of providing the highest quality, most efficient dental care to our patients. Dental monitoring has proven to be one of those transformative technologies in orthodontics and dental practices globally, really drastically changing the entire business model, how we serve our patients, and how also, and more importantly, we use data to make strategic and preemptive adjustments in how we do business. It's really revolutionized the orthodontic industry. Um, when we talk about virtual monitoring and appointments for our patients, we're not talking about limiting the care or interaction that we have with our patients, but rather on the contrary, really advancing that and increasing that with our patients. It allows us to really use data to make and data driven insights to make informed, calculated decisions. And it also allows us to 
set a new standard in patient care. And I'll tell you, which I'll share with you in a few more slides, our patients are expecting it. This has now become the new standard of care. Just like if you tried to schedule a patient for a three appointment new patient exam, you're gonna get a reputation in the industry and patients are gonna recognize that that does not fit into what their new expectations are in their patient care because they've heard about it and oftentimes experienced what the technology convenience provides them. So throughout this process, I do want to challenge you to think about that elevated expected standard of care. And think about in the past, again, those of you that were in the industry at that time, remember and can think back the challenges that we had in the doctors needing to be able to make quick treatment planning and recommendations to the patient. I remember the challenge that the doctors had to shift their thought process and say, well, I need time to write this up and to compare the x-rays and to work up a model. And it, it was a shift in what we thought about how technology served us. And that's exactly what dental monitoring is. It's a disruptive shift in how we provide care to our patients. With dental monitoring, we realize that it allows us for continuous monitoring of patients' dental conditions, including so many different dental pathologies, enabling you as providers to make calculated and informed decisions that support your patient's dental health, their compliance with hygiene and treatment, and to really minimize their overall dental health burdens throughout their orthodontic treatment. We're going to talk about how you can use that to combine um, your patient care in a treatment team for your mutual patients and expand your marketing efforts and your reputation in the industry among your referring doctors and your professional partners. But we also recognize that it allows us to use real-time data from dental monitoring insights and that data, the volume of data gets me really excited. As a coach and a business advisor, I never provide recommendations or changes to processes without data. I really want to truly remove perception and feeling and make calculated recommendations based on data. And the amount of data that we have that dental monitoring provides us really arms us well as business advisors. And it should for you within your business as well. We can also uh, provide a more accurate diagnosis and personalized treatment plans for each of our patients. So really this care and service demonstrates our commitment to our patients and our professional partners truly creating the treatment team on behalf of our mutual patients. It, it's one of the best marketing tools you can have for your referring doctors. And it's not even talking about how, how dental monitoring differentiates your practice and sets you apart from your competitors or within your communities. It's really truly about creating a treatment team that's elevated on behalf of your mutual patients. And we'll talk about that a little bit further into the presentation. The last three to five years, I don't think any of us can argue with the fact that we've seen a dramatic shift towards a more patient-centric approach and the demand for enhanced patient experiences. I see this online. I see this on social media. I see this on TV. It really is a shift towards being less provider driven and definitely more patient centric in all healthcare, really in all services. How many of us have done most of our Christmas shopping on Amazon? I have to tell you, I sit in the hot tub at night and I just check everything off and it comes very, very quickly. That is consumer centric, consumer driven service and care. And it's convenient. So think about every aspect of our life in what we look for in that convenience. COVID forced that out of all of us to be able to really keep our doors open at the time. And it was a wonderful tool. It served our patients, it served our practice. Uh, it's discouraging for me when I actually see the amount of practices that actually used the, that technology and those services 
at that time and then reverted back to what they've always done before. The most expensive words in business are that we've always done it that way. So I hope that today I can inspire and motivate and encourage each of you to get excited about growth and change and not be fearful of that, but to also recognize that this is what will allow not only, you know, team members, you professionally to grow and to be more valuable to the practice, but practice owners for you to really recognize how your business can be profitable and efficient and how you can open up channels of growth. Um, those words, the most expensive words in business or that we've always done it that way really can't be truer in regards to virtual appointments and dental monitoring. Our patients' expectations in their standard of care has changed and you better believe that they are not going back to what they expect. So if we look at what a traditional care and provider, it looks like it's also reactive measures. A patient comes in and we're going to react to what we see at that time. With dental monitoring, we're able to be very strategic in our responses and prioritize those solutions to each patient's uniqueness. Through that process, we get more participation out of our patients. Um, it fosters a sense of control and engagement. And in doing that, in shifting from a traditional, more patient-centric approach, you facilitate your patients being vested in their orthodontic solution. And what that translates for you is faster treatment, higher compliance, and better results. If we were to delineate out those three topics even farther, it would look at easier scheduling throughout your day, less chaos because we're not having to react to what just shows up, but we're well aware of every patient coming through our door. It's very strategic scheduling. So I really want us to look how can we shift to a more centric patient approach. We recognize that patient-centric approach enhances our patient experience and fosters a patient-focused environment by allowing for remote monitoring, which reduces in-office visits, and it provides a convenience of a higher level of treatment and communication with your patient, not a lower level of treatment and care. Uh, in a few slides, we're going to talk about how to translate this information into your exam and into your education level to your patient. But I want to put this out here right now, because when I go into practices, most of the time, there are a few key team members that can strongly educate on what dental monitoring is. And I want every single team member in the practice to be able to launch into a strong, confident education to your patients because your practice is passionate about this patient-centric approach to orthodontic treatment and orthodontic solutions that your patients are seeking. And what I find is a common misperception among team members is that a service and care such as dental monitoring is actually a lower level of care and treatment to your patients. And that could not be further from the truth. It actually can increase communication with our patients upwards of over 400%. We'll go through that in a, in a few slides, but really it's a higher level of patient care and service for your patients. And that's what I hope that I can educate you on today and I can inspire a passion in you to recognize that's truly what this solution is for your patients. Our patient expectations are evolving and in today's modern healthcare landscape, patients seek not only effective treatment, but also positive and convenient overall experiences. And dental monitoring provides each and every one of those. It provides a personalization and a customization that allows us to really make the entire ortho experience more individualized. And everything that I've just, every bullet point that I've just expanded on on this slide, I don't know one patient or one parent that would choose not to seek that type of service and care and treatment. So in doing that, it really provides a competitive advantage for your practice. Practices that 
embrace patient-centric technologies like dental monitoring, gain that competitive edge with their positive patient experience that lead to not only increased satisfaction, but also word of mouth referrals, contributing to your overall practice growth. That's what we are looking to accomplish. We are looking to turn our patients into our walking, talking referrals. We all know that a patient in the middle of the night scheduling on our website is less of a solid lead and less the, um, percentage of a chance that they will come in for their new patient exam than a patient referred by an existing patient. Those are very solid leads because it's word of mouth and they are coming into your practice because you have turn your existing patients into your walking, talking referrals. Dental monitoring empowers patients by providing them with access to their treatment progress, allowing patients to become more active participants in their care, fostering a sense of control and engagement, with tra which translates to higher compliance. Patients are invested in their journey with you. Patients are invested in their journey with you. That increases compliance to the strategic scheduling appointments, compliance to their scans. And I know that's gonna be a question we get at the end. I'm excited to address it. It increases the compliance with their treatment modality, whether that be aligners, elastics, brackets, because patients are invested in their journey with you. You're not simply dragging them along on this journey. And oftentimes that's what we feel like when we're managing our patients within the practice. We also know that DM reduces inconvenience for patients. So we know that there are a lot of challenges in our patients and family schedules right now. So anytime that we can allow our patient to be more involved in their treatment and reduce the need for constant in-person appointments, it translates to communication and trust to your patients. And that's what dental monitoring provides us. As I said on the previous slide, oftentimes we can we have the opportunity for upwards of over 400% increase in our communication with our patients as customized or as automated as we desire it to be. So when we talk about the increased opportunity for that communication, we have to recognize how that coincides with trust. And the role of trust in orthodontic care is imperative. And dental monitoring contributes to building that strong, trusted patient practitioner relationship. So we'll discuss that um, at length when we get into the new patient exam process and the importance of trust when influencing our patients as well. So practices that have effectively integrated dental monitoring into their services have a unique differentiator already in establishing a distinctive identity. Why do you need a distinctive identity? Think about this for a minute. Why do you need to set yourself apart in how you serve your patients? Why do patients feel the need to go to two to three different orthodontic consultations? Most of the time experiencing very similar exam processes, maybe a slight variation in the treatment recommendation, but most of the time it's also gonna be an offered treatment. I wanna challenge each and every one of you here today to recognize you are the experts your patients are seeking an orthodontic solution, and I want you to be the greatest solution to their orthodontic problems. And when you can tap into that passion and you can effectively educate and set yourself apart, differentiate yourself with your unique solutions, that is truly how you're going to turn your patients into your walking, talking referrals. Patients go on average to two to three different orthodontic new patient exams. And the reason being is because they are looking for the solution that meets their needs. They're looking for the experience and the relationship. And through every slide that I built out for us today, I hope that I am uh, sending and creating a message of how trust 
and how communication can really support and build that unique relationship with our patients to set you apart and create that distinct identity. A unique identity not only attracts patients, but it also positions you as a leader in the industry, providing advanced patient-centric care that we just talked about the importance of. We can't any longer set ourselves apart with muffin runs or what our summer patient party looks like. That is old school. That is no longer what our patients are seeking. Sure, there are great benefits for your professional partners. It's fun for your patients. They appreciate it. They enjoy it. But that does not set you apart in the competitive landscape that our industry fights against right now. There's a tremendous need with that competitive dynamics within our industry that should include a constant quest for innovation and differentiation. So let's talk about how you will stand out amid similar services offered by competitors. When aligners first came out, practices used that as a differentiator. Now every practice provides that. So think about, we're gonna talk about early adopters, but think about you, uh, at the cutting edge up front of this very patient-centric landscape and service that you can provide. Again, um, I have talked about the most expensive words in business so that we've always done it that way. I'm also going to share with you the most expensive and painful place to live in a business model growth, and that is in dabbling. When I, because my team and I come in and we set up internal systems and processes, we really see what works, what's effective with efficiency, what's profitable, and the most expensive and painful place, painful for the team because it's more work, is when you're dabbling in a modality, a system, or a process. What I challenge you to do is to revisit what your vision statement is, what your mission statement is, and find the solutions that meet those needs of your patient's ever-changing demands. When you can do that, you can really recognize what a modality like dental monitoring can provide your patients, and you can go all in. When you go all in, you're able to change your internal workflow, you're able to change your standard operating procedures, and you're able, able to truly experience the benefits of what dental monitoring can provide you. It really allows you to stay ahead of the curve and meet with those patients' expectations for progressive care can provide, and again, not simply going backwards because we don't have to do that anymore like we did with COVID. So dental monitoring, we also know, allows us to gain um, a technological edge that can set our practice apart from competitors with the potential for attracting tech-savvy patients who actively seek providers embracing the latest advancements. So think about all of these parts of what dental monitoring can provide you in setting yourself apart from your competitors. Let's build this out a little bit farther and recognize what that competitive advantage is. I've already shared with you an example in the past of our industry or in our industry's history of how we have changed and adapted our internal processes because of what technology gives us. And there can't be a greater example than the three-step new patient exam process. Um, I know it's what we live with every day, all day. We are very unconsciously competent in that process, which means we could do it with our eyes closed. However, think for a moment what it took to shift and change from what we'd always done before. So when we talk about setting ourselves apart with our competitors, we have to build credibility. And building trust and credibility is a lot easier as early adopters of dental monitoring because among patients who value innovation and advanced healthcare solutions, it's a no-brainer. We also know that credibility contributes to patient loyalty and those positive word of mouth referrals. We also want to create a niche in the market and dental monitoring is not just a tool, but it's a strategic positioning element in how you do business and serve your patients. It 
when we can use dental monitoring to create that niche in the market for our practice, we can attract patients who are specifically seeking the benefit it offers. And in a few slides, we'll talk about how you can actually have influence over those patients that didn't even know they were seeking the benefits that dental monitor can offer, dental monitoring can offer. So through strategic marketing, we want to be able to drive our purpose within the practice. And dental monitoring really gives us insights in what our patients are seeking and what it can provide them. So when we talk about communication and credibility and trust, we have to recognize that all three of those characteristics fit into a modality and a service like dental monitoring. So by expanding on the establishment or the concept of a distinctive identity, we really want to recognize how being successful at integrating dental monitoring and emphasizing the advantages of early adoption positions your practice as a strategic differentiator and a competitor in our in our ortho markets right now, which uh, is very common. That is a struggle right now in marketing in our practices. I will hope that I can motivate and inspire you to see how dental monitoring can be um, an enhancement to that strategic marketing. So as we move into the exam process, I did want to show you these specific success stories of practices that I've worked with that have seamlessly integrated dental marketing into their services and have gone all in this year from last year. So with respecting confidentiality, um, I tried to put some information in here that would mean something to you. Um, this is in a year when industry experts like Benson Koppel really state that our industry is down on average 8%, I think they say. This is something that means something very powerful to me. This data is very powerful to me in what dental monitoring can provide a practice. And I can confidently say that, yes, we've worked with these practices, we've mastered their internal systems and really enhanced their processes. However, we would not be able to have achieved this type of growth without incorporating dental monitoring because we're not, this isn't building new facilities. This isn't adding new team members. This isn't adding additional chairs or patient days. On the contrary, it's taking the, patient, the practice's current existing situation and determining how can we maximize and enhance that. And on average, we have seen about 20 to 30% less appointments a day when our practices go all in with dental monitoring. So the next part of our time today will give you a step-by-step -step instruction on how you too can experience these improvements within your practice. My team and I just yesterday um, are creating a new schedule template uh, for a large client of ours. And I will say building a schedule template is not about feelings and perceptions. It's not about saying, I think we need more of these appointments, or I don't think we have enough time, or I don't think we have enough assistance. And if I ask different team members in the practice, they're all going to give me a different solution because the pain or the problem that they feel in their schedule template varies based on the position they hold. When we create schedule templates, we pull data. We look at based on your specific uh, historical data in your practice, how long your appointments are, how many appointments you have, how many chairs you have, um, the doctor timing. It is a very extensive calculation that we use. So when we say to a client, you don't have enough hours in the day, you don't have enough room in your practice with the right number of chairs, you don't have enough team members, it's not a perception of thinking the practice is chaotic or runs late and we don't have enough time to facilitate the appointments or procedures. It is based off of data and numbers don't lie. So when we do these calculations with our clients, we feel really excited to be able to provide a solution such as dental monitoring to say, listen, in your current scenario, you do not have enough hours or minutes in the day. 
Let's cut your schedule down by 20 to 30% with this modality that also puts you on the cutting edge of innovation and serves your patients ever-changing expectations of standard of care. So that's what I get really excited and passionate about. I could, I could spend all day with you about this process. This is something that excites me because it does take technology, which is everywhere in our lives, and it combines it with an industry that I love to my core. So take a moment. I want to breathe a second here, but I want to ask each of you to think about for a moment if there's ever been a show that you've binge watched. So if I were to ask you that question, think about what, what show you would share with me. If somebody were to ask me that question, I would, without skipping a beat, say Yellowstone. I love Yellowstone. I've actually embarrassingly binge watched it twice. Um, 1883, 1923, like I have, I just love it. it makes me want to buy a ranch in Montana. I just, it's really something that I truly love. If we were to be sitting around a table or visiting and I was talking to you about it, the passion that I feel about that show would be able to influence you to at least seek it out and check it out and see what it is. So what I want to share with you is when you can tap into the passion that you feel with your practice and the solutions you provide your patients, you have influence. You have influence over your patients. When passion is involved, it's not high pressure sales. So yes, I train in sales every day, all day. I don't like that word. I like the word influence because that's really what we're doing. We're listening to our patients and what they're seeking and what they need. And we're serving them in a very patient centric um, level of care. So I want to talk about the impact of passion on your patient's perception and overall satisfaction as well. Pas uh, passion influences patient trust. A passionate doctor and team member inspires trust and confidence that we spoke about a few slides back. It is not just about skills, but also about creating that connection and instilling that confidence with your patients. When passion is manifested in day-to-day -day patient interaction, everything from your initial consultation to your ongoing treatment discussion as educators, you have much greater level of success with your patients. When I go into a practice and I see a dental monitoring flyer or a piece of marketing within the practice, the first thing I do is I ask the front desk, the first person that I see are, what does Dino Watt um, call them? Oh, I forgot. Anyways, they um, are, uh, anybody can shout it out here. What is it? The uh, director of first impressions, our director of first impressions. So the first person that I see, our director of first impressions, and I ask them, I say, what is this? Most of the time they'll look up at me and they'll say, oh, that's dental monitoring. That allows you not to have to come into uh, your appointments every month. Okay, sure, that's true. But think about the difference in delivering that message if that director of first impression stands up and says, let me tell you about this. Our patients absolutely love this. This provides us the highest level of metrics and data and eyes on your treatment that supports you coming into the pra practice for strategic scheduling. Doctor actually will advise and guide you on whenever you have to come into the practice so that we know exactly what to serve you for that day. Our patients love the convenience of it. Our patients love the higher level of communication with our practice over it. It really supports faster treatment, getting the ultimate greatest result for you as our patient um, with, in, the, in the most time efficient fashion. So think about those two forms of delivering that information. Think about the passion that your director of first impression delivers to your patients when they ask about dental monitoring. It doesn't start and stop with the treatment coordinator. Passion goes beyond technical proficiency. It reflects a genuine care and authenticity for the patient's well-being 
and truly believing that your practice is the greatest solution to your patient's orthodontic problems. There is no greater solution out there. You can facilitate the most efficient, convenient care for your patients. And this supports that seamless transition into treatment with the treatment coordinator through the presumptive close, which we'll talk about in a few slides. So this is the perfect scenario and example of how every single team member in your practice plays a role in the success of incorporating and implementing dental monitoring within your practice, or frankly, any service and care that you provide your patients. It's important that you're you as the doctor and the team member contribute to creating a positive and welcoming atmosphere in your practice. Um, you want to have a warm and passionate demeanor that helps alleviate patients' anxiety and fosters that sense of comfort, really lowering any barriers of defense or discomfort that the patient is feeling and experiencing as they enter into your practice. Transparency in communication is key. It uh, really enhances the patient's relatability with us. Um, ultimately, influence is about minimizing or lowering any defensive barriers and creating a seamless highway of communication and influence with your patients. And transparency supports that. Reliability and consistency are key and you cannot have something different than dental monitoring or other than dental monitoring that creates that reliability and that consistency for your patients. But to be able to do that and provide that reliability and consistency through dental monitoring, you have to have solid workflows. You have to have solid standard operating procedures where every person in your practice understands that patient's pathway through your practice, and they understand their role in contributing towards that. So Patients can feel more secure when they perceive you as the doctor and the team is genuinely invested in their oral health. And when you can elevate that to the patient also being invested in their treatment, the recipe is magic. What we want to do is we really want to help our patients see our commitment to our professional development. Um, our commitment to their well-being and a lasting relationship with them. This is what inspires confidence through that personal commitment and that personal connection. So when you help your patients see, we're talking about a differentiator, using dental monitoring as a differentiator, how we can set ourselves apart and influence more patients to start treatment with your practice. And it's important that you help your patients through that process to understand what you invest in with your professional development, your commitment to continuous learning and, and your demonstration of the passion that you have for our industry and the technological advancement that is happening right now. It's important that you are an advocate for the patient's well-being and that you are building those lasting relationships. This type of comprehensive care truly fosters that sense of trust and confidence that we've just talked about and builds those long-lasting and influential doctor-patient relationships, which, again, translates to turning your patients into your walking, talking referrals. When we talk about the process within our new patient exam, we have talked a lot about in the past, and it's been consistent in the coaching and training over the last decade to recommend treatment. Don't simply offer solutions when your patients walk through your door. Recognize that you are the expert. You are the one they are seeking orthodontic care from. As that ex educated expert, We've always talked about the importance of recommending the best treatment. I'm going to challenge you to elevate that and to prescribe treatment. There's a tremendous psychology behind the words that we use. And to, for you as the expert, educated provider, to prescribe treatment to your patient is a really powerful process. So when, we're going to talk about integrating dental monitoring into your exams, but I want you to recognize as you look to integrate dental monitoring as your standard of care in every exam, not just as an offering, we, I want you to recognize how dental monitoring enhances your diagnostic process 
by providing real-time data and insights on your patients. I want you to recognize that your patients can experience a more personalized and technologically advanced exam. So when we also talk about how what it can do in our practices, it's important that we allow our patients to see what dental monitoring has been and represented to other patients that we have as well. What, what are our other patient experiences been? Share those with your new patients, because again, that just elevates the experience as an educator. We want to start out by educating our patients on what dental monitoring is and most importantly, why it fits into your vision within your practice in your patient care. The convenience of remote monitoring, reducing the need for frequent, unnecessary office visits, and how patients can continue their treatment journey with minimal disruption in their daily lives. Then we want to empower our patients through information in communicating how dental monitoring um, provides them with real-time information about their treatment progress as well. We know statistically that patient compliance goes up when they're vested in their treatment. And being vested in their treatment is your patient recognizing and understanding with real-time information their treatment progress. We also want to stress the importance of informed decision-making and how dental monitoring facilitates that process in our practice and how it allows us to really personalize our care and solutions. Dental monitoring is a tool that enables that more personalized and tailored treatment plans. The data collected through dental monitoring allows for any adjustments that cater to specifically to this patient's treatment in the moment right now and their patient needs. So we, I, I do wanna share with you some prerequisites for success in, and, and really to outline the fundamental elements required for successful integration of dental monitoring. We've talked about your team's passion. Each person within your team needs to tap into the passion that they have and understand the why behind what you commit to in your patient care. Take a moment in a business meeting that you have with your team and ask every single one of your team members, how do you feel about dental monitoring? Their answer is the message they will exude to your patients. That's where you want to work backwards to the why behind why you've chosen this as a solution for your patients and why you believe into this. You want to um, create and help your team understand the patient engagement strategies. So we wanna highlight strategies that really enhance that patient engagement, such as educational materials and interactive tools, and really emphasize the role the team has in fostering that patient enthusiasm for this technology. When we talk about communication processes, we do need to recognize how important digital workflow is and those visuals for your team members. And we'll talk about that in a few slides. As treatment coordinators, confidence is imperative for the success of your exam. You are not simply an assistant to the exam process. You are an educator and an influencer. We have to recognize that confidence instills positivity and trust, which influences your patient's decision making. Eye contact, clear, confident, and concise communication. Don't be afraid to ask clarifying questions. Take full advantage of what dental monitoring as a business provides you through training programs, such as the study club. Utilize every tool you can to really grow and improve and maximize your skill sets as a treatment coordinator. And I also recommend and challenge you to role play with your friends, with your team members. I say friends, your team members in your practice. Role play the process because feedback and you listening to others role, role play the education of what dental monitoring is to your patients is very valuable in your own learning process as well. Those of you that have heard me in the past or, or know of my team and I, you know how solidly I believe in collaboration. That's where we truly can become the best us that we possibly can be. So it's important that together you can understand the educational message that your practice needs to deliver to your patients, pr provide that to each team member and practice and role play it together. 
Nobody wants to sound like a broken record. Nobody wants to read a script. But if you memorize the message and process or the concept of it, you're able to confidently deliver that message with your own personality. And that's what's really important. There are common challenges and um, areas of difficulty in, in exams, oftentimes around the educational process with dental monitoring. I do want to share with you most of those barriers that patients present to us can be combated ahead of time by following the steps in the previous slides we've gone through. Most of the time, the barriers and challenges come or we face those when we are not successful in the processes of building the trust, the education, the confidence, the clarity in our communication and tapping into that passion with a full solid education to our patients in the beginning and then prescribing to the patients our solution and why it affects them. So really um, the treatment coordinators may face challenges in the exam process presenting dental monitoring, but they're nearly non-existent when the techniques from earlier slides are done effectively. We also want to recognize the importance of continual feedback so that we can continually improve in our processes. And um, in my next slide, actually, I show a roadmap of what that looks like, but this is a process of assessing and planning and understanding what you want to implement in your practice, train and educate your team on that process, and then integrate this into your workflows. This is an example of what a dental monitoring workflow might look like. I have some really intense detailed ones, but I just wanted to put a visual here for you. And this sample slide right here is an example of the roadmap of how to identify, implement, pivot where needed, understanding it's a fluid process. We want to measure the metrics versus going off of feelings and then create a roadmap that is able to be clearly understood through standard operating procedures and um, repeatable. It is important when you're influencing your patients to be able to showcase your positive outcomes and to really share your patient journey narratives. These are really powerful tools for your new patients because it actually puts in place quantifiable success metrics, which include your dental implementation, reduced treatment times, increased patient satisfaction scores. So really it's the ability uh, for building confidence among treatment coordinators and implementing dental monitoring successfully within your practice. Today, my goal has been to reinforce the importance of technology, patient centricity, effective communication and strategic decision-making in unlocking success in your practice with dental monitoring as a central catalyst for positive transformation. So I wanted to share a few pearls on leveraging dental monitoring through the combination of early adoption, passionate providers, practitioners, and team members, effective communication and personalized patient experiences that truly positions a practice for sustained growth and success. So I hope that I can inspire you to truly not only implement, but to go all in with what dental monitoring provides you in your practice. The success really includes a clear workflow and communication channels internally as well. So your entire team should understand the practice's vision for patient care and goals in the and the internal process and workflow of your patient's journey. So as I said, I, it's Friday. I'm thrilled to be here with each and every one of you guys. I thank you for joining us. This is about you. This is about being able to interact and be able to answer any questions that you have. My team and I have the privilege of working with practices all over the world. And if I've referenced or mentioned anything that you feel would be helpful and beneficial, the last slide includes my contact information. But right now, I believe we have a DM moderator that will uh, be able to moderate any questions that came through on the chat. Yes, that is me, Krista. Um, Michelle, thank you, first off, so much. Um, your presentation was 
Great. I think that um, you have inspired me. Um, so <laughs> with the uh, the power of your influence, um, I do have, we don't have any questions just yet in the chat. I want to encourage everyone um, to go ahead and post your questions, but we have some questions that have come from the field and our experience in being in other offices that maybe have not joined the call today. And so I wanted to present some of those questions to you also. Um, the first question would be, you know, when a doctor is making a decision on patients that will be receiving dental monitoring, or maybe they're offering dental monitoring as an option, um, how do you suggest that that communication occurs between the doctor and the TC to explain who should get dental monitoring so that there's an understanding and the treatment coordinator knows who you're presenting this to? Great question, Krista. Um, I'm actually going to challenge that. And I, it physically hurts to hear offering or deciding who and when, because as I said earlier, that is a very painful place to live. And I say painful, meaning team members, that makes your job harder because you can't effectively change your internal protocols. Just like you said, Krista, even around your exam process, you're not adjusting what your exam process is going to be. You've got a stopgap there where you're like, ooh, wait, is this person a candidate? Is this gonna be what we're gonna do? That in and of itself creates hiccups in your workflow. I have practices and the examples I showed you were practices that committed to all in. So I have not seen results like what I demonstrated to you with practices that are dabbling in the process. And I say this, I don't care if practices do dental monitoring or not. I'm completely a third party here. I am just eyes on what I see as the greatest growth opportunities within a practice. And I don't know of a practice that is not concerned about growth going into next year and what they've experienced this year. So I recommend you have dental monitoring provides a phenomenal opportunity within your growth and development and monitoring your OBS patients. Um, dental monitoring gives us more data around brackets than it does even, I mean, with, yes, of course, it's a no-brainer with aligners, but with brackets, as a clinical coach, I can truly understand what is behind our breakage percentage. That's a key performance indicator in a practice that we look at. And so to not only recognize what our breakage percentage is, how can we use data to arm us in turning that around and providing an actual solution? How can we support our patients' compliance with their hygiene? How can we support and increase communication with our hygienists on behalf of our mutual patient? So I know, Krista, I kind of, you know, pivoted around your actual question. I hope I can provide strong recommendations in how you should Imp implement and incorporate DM if you're still deciding and determining who you might offer it to you're not going to be as successful when you offer it some patients are going to see a lot of value but it's your responsibility as an educator to influence your patient in truly understanding the value to them and so to back up to simply answer your question I would absolutely choose you can choose a malocclusion you can choose a treatment modality you can choose an age group and just create clear communication with the TC and the doctor on what the initial parameters are going to be. Um, we want to arm the TC as an expert, and that's going to be where you start with that process. Thank you. I think that's. I think you made it extremely clear, and and I think that's <laughs> also, hopefully hopefully the um you know the people listening will will hear that as well. Um, kind of a piggyback to to that question or moving in the the process then. Do you feel that most offices um, incorporate dental monitoring in their contracts as part of um, treatment that the patient is responsible for so that the patient understands and is signing at that as part of the process? Great question. Um, the practices, yes, that are doing, I'll say a lot of DM, I won't even say all in, of course, the all in practices, absolutely, they're incorporated, they're not introducing a barrier to the patient's buy in to this solution, and this service that, frankly, if you're going to charge them extra, you're introducing a barrier. And don't quote me on this and the DM teams here, but I think on average, what it's about $250 a patient over the treatment time, I think maybe a whatever. Somebody correct me on that. It's a pretty good ballpark, I think. Yeah. That's, that's a 
that's what I typically find and see. That is minimal. Raise your fees $250. I mean, when I see the value of what it does to the schedule, when I see the value of what it does to the patient's experience and convenience, it's you know, it's the multiplier of that value is significant. So yes, I would absolutely not recommend introducing a barrier to the patient choosing that service. And frankly, I would highly suggest this just being your standard of care. Hopefully I've inspired and educated you on what the value is to your business. And so that should really be a standard of care that differentiates your practice apart and it is included in the patient's contract. Okay. And then um, as far as including in the contract, um, also referring to just simply the patient compliance aspect of that, um, should that be stated in the contract? And then second part to that question would be, you know, what do you recommend for tools that could be implemented in the console just to help with compliance other than adding it to the contract maybe, but um, what, what could be done from the TC's for perspective to help with compliance moving forward with dental monitoring and make sure those patients understand the value of scanning? So that starts in the very beginning, the very first slide that I showed you and talked about in building trust and confidence in really building yourself as an authority in this treatment. If we are offering something to our patients, we are not building the importance of what that solution actually is. If we are prescribing this, you know, if I, if I go to my medical doctor and they say, you know, Michelle, if you take this supplement, it can help you feel better. Whereas if I go and the doctor prescribes, Michelle, you need high blood pressure medication or you're going to have a stroke. Like, I mean, I know those are dramatic examples, but that's a difference between offering a supplement and prescribing a solution. So keep that in mind in that in and of itself and how it contributes to your patient's compliance. If I was in your office in a new patient exam, educating our uh, your patient on their treatment modality and the solution that you're prescribing for you, for them, the compliance would not be an issue with that patient. The compliance becomes an issue when it's presented as an option to the patients. When it's a part of the prescribed solution and the patient understands the necessity of it, and not, not just as a convenience for them, because if we're talking about it just being a convenience for the patient, not convenience for me to scan right now, I'm not gonna scan today. That's not convenient for me. So do you see, yes, for us to believe the value to the patients, for us to also help to educate the patients on why we choose this modality and service, convenience is important, but not to build convenience on your prescription. Because you are telling the patient right then and there, it's about their convenience. And guess what? When it's not convenient for them, they won't scan. So hopefully I can really be strong in, in that recommendation about how and where it starts with the patient. You prescribe this as part of their solution. This is what we need for their orthodontic treatment and why. Now, I would... I don't find in practices that dental monitoring necessarily minimizes staff, but it does minimize doctor needed time in the practice, doctor time. It does minimize chair usage. It allows you to grow at the percentages I demonstrated without changing or adding any team members or chairs or doctor hours in the practice. So, and there's a shift. Um, this is a whole nother lecture we'll do, but a shift in how you take a technician off of a clinical chair, shift them over into your DMC hours and their uh, role at that point. But that's what I talk about with compliance. Did that, I'm sorry, Krista, did that answer your question? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I, yes, it did. Thank you. Um, so another question um, is, would you offer dental monitoring to patients with six months or less in treatment? So I'm not sure if this is referring um, specifically to a phase one treatment or more someone who is already in active treatment. Um, but do you, what would your be, what would be your recommendation there? Great question. I'm going as a third party, I'm going to be completely um, transparent here because you asked the question. If a patient, and I'm, I'm never going to offer it, I'm just going to remove that word from my verbiage. We are expert providers in the medical industry. We are not offering a solution. 
we are prescribing a solution to the patient. If the patient is beyond estimated months in treatment and we've had compliance conversations with them, I would have a conversation to say, we're done and we're gonna remove them. Or we can put you into dental monitoring to be very strategic about this solution for you to finish and complete treatment. Or we're gonna start charging to, to continue as is with your treatment. Now, the reason with that third option, I would charge them for a non-compliance to extend treatment is because they've shown me a history of what they're going to be doing. A simple conversation isn't going to change that behavior. So I'm going to offer a different solution for them to get a different solution, to get a different result. So I would do that if a patient is past their estimated months in treatment. I would absolutely do that with a phase one patient because it can extend into what their OBS and monitoring is between treatment. And I want that between treatment phase, monitoring that growth and development. I want the patients vested in that process. I want to avoid patients looking for a different orthodontist between phase one and phase two, which is so common nowadays. So those scenarios I would. A patient that is on track and doing really well and compliant um, that isn't one I would necessarily target because the six month mark is, um, yeah, I, maybe that's one I would offer it to, to say you've been so compliant, you've been so great, we've got this technology, if this is convenient to you, um, you know, I might you know, offer that as an option if it was, you know, convenient and they wanted to do that, but it's not one that I would strategically target as I was looking to implement and go all in with DM. That question actually pertains to patients that are currently existing because think we're going to prescribe it to all of our patients from the beginning. And so we wouldn't have that scenario um, once we cycled through our patient base. Okay, and I'm just going to ask one final question. This is not in the chat, but I'm going to ask it um, myself. So you talked a lot about prescribing treatment and um, and and having dental monitoring be prescribed as part of the patient's treatment. Um, how important is that prescription to come from the doctor in some capacity and not only from the TC during the consult? It's key. It's key to come from the doctor. The doctor is the word of authority. The treatment coordinator's role is to lay that foundation to really understand what the doctor is going to prescribe. A seasoned treatment coordinator who has history with their doctor is essentially an extension of that doctor's voice and education. We know what our doctor is going to choose. We know what they're going to prefer. We know their ability. They are an extension of that doctor's voice and education. So the role of the treatment coordinator is to really lay a foundation for what the doctor is going to come in and prescribe. So I always encourage treatment coordinators to start before the doctors even come in for the clinical findings start educating the patient on what you do in your practice, what you're experts in and why. The knowing and trusting that the doctor is going to come into that exam and prescribe the greatest solution specific to this practice. But if we hold back and we don't talk about whether it's aligners because maybe this patient isn't a candidate or dental monitoring, this patient isn't going to be a candidate, educate, shout it from the rooftops on who you are and what you do, knowing that the doctor is going to come in and fully prescribe and customize the best solution specific to this patient. But when you do that, you open up so many more channels of referral. That patient or parent could go out and say, hey, my doctor recommended this for me, but this is what they specialize in too. You should go check them out. It's the same thing talking about you know braces, but one patient might need a pres uh, prescription for an expander and one wouldn't, you know? Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate all of the time. I know that you've even um, run over a little bit here answering questions. So thank you for, for doing that, for spending a couple extra minutes with us um, going beyond the time that we originally allotted. So um, I know that everybody here on the call, all of the ISP team, we thank you for joining our study club. This has been a great thing that we have had this year to offer to our practices. And, and we just thank you for kicking it finishing up the year with uh, with your presentation, so. 
Thank you so much, Krista. Thank you just everybody for the work um, that you guys put in and most importantly to the entire dental monitoring team. As a practice advisor, I always appreciate your commitment to the success of the, your practices. Um, you are always willing to partner with my team and I ultimately for the success of the practices. And that's something that I highly admire and respect and I'm grateful for. So thank you for the opportunity to be here. I have my contact information up. If anybody wants to reach out to me directly, um, I would love to be able to talk about the needs within your practice. But thank you so much again, the team at Dental Monitoring, and I wish everybody a fabulous afternoon and weekend ahead. Happy holidays.